Build Show Network. Hey guys, how's it going? I got a quick video for you today on something I just don't do. I don't do, so I don't see it very often. Uh, we're going to be talking about this slab on today's video. Now, this is slab on grade construction, pretty typical uh, in the South and in Texas in particular for many reasons. The first, of course, being we don't have a frost line here. It just doesn't freeze enough to have that freeze thaw uh, cycle and issue like they do in the North. The second issue though that we typically end up with these is because we have a ton of rock. Uh, you know, and where I am in central Texas, oftentimes we'll have six inches of soil and then we'll be down to solid rock. Uh, so a full in ground foundation, even if you wanted one, just isn't possible. But I wanted to show you something that I don't see uh, on my jobs very often, so I thought I'd show it to you. You know what this is? This looks like rebar, but actually these are post-tension cables. This is a post-tension slab which means that there's not a lot of rebar, really probably no rebar in this slab construction. There's still usually grade beams and that sort of thing. But what happens is these cables run front all the way to the back continuous. And it's called post tension because they're gonna pour the concrete and then later they're gonna come back with a tensioning machine. Uh, there's basically a huge uh, machine, an engine right here that sits at the end of this cable and they're gonna stretch the cable. There's gonna be a, a post on one side, and on this side, they're gonna stretch it and then put a post in, which in effect uh, is going to keep the concrete in stress. It's gonna squeeze that concrete for the duration of the foundation. Now, I don't know the actual numbers on the uh, amount of tension, but my understanding is it's a ton of tension. And you see they've got those cables spaced about every Gosh, I don't know what, 24 inches maybe on the foundation. I'm sure an engineer was involved because you see some cables that are uh, close together and kind of combined over here. But one thing that that uh, is interesting about post tension is because the slab's in tension, you see very, very little cracking on a slab like this. So for instance, the garage is over here. They've got a big three car garage, maybe some hairline cracks, but not much. So if you're doing an exposed slab, let's say you're gonna uh, stain and seal that concrete or do an epoxy finish or something like that, this can be a good way to go. You see a lot of production builders do it because there's not a lot of rebar or there's no rebar. Uh, it ends up being a less costly way to build a foundation. My concern with it and the reason I don't do it though is these right here. This is the kitchen plumbing. You can see you've got a bunch of plumbing in the kitchen including some uh, drain waste vent and some water lines back there. If we ever jackhammered that and move it, see how we got a bunch of cables right here? If we decided to do a kitchen or a bath remodel, uh, we would have to be extremely cautious not to hit one of those cables as we're jackhammering. Because if we hit one and cut one by accident, number one, that cable could kill somebody. It's, in, it's under massive tension and it could actually rip through the concrete and rip somebody in half. So it's dangerous. Number two, if we were to cut one, all of a sudden that foundation is not gonna be in tension anymore and won't have the adequate support that it needs. It's really hard to retrofit one of these. In fact, basically impossible. You're gonna to have to talk to an engineer about how to fix it. I don't even know how to fix it, to be honest. So some pros on um, post-tension is that it's a little less costly. You're gonna have less crack. That's, that's a really good thing. Some cons is that remodels down the way are, are really uh, kind of touch and go, and uh, you have to be extremely cautious working around them. And um, of course, a cable could have a problem even during construction. So you wanna, you wanna experience crew. Uh, a ton of them get built. I would expect multiple thousands, uh, you know, in the 10 to 20, 30, 40,000 of these foundations a year, at least in Texas. So the technology is there and certainly works but I tend to not use them on my jobs. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for joining me, guys, for this special build show from a slab that's not even mine. Uh, I, I had an open gate here, and I figured the builder wouldn't mind. Uh, if you're not currently a subscriber to our new channel, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here, a ton from a bunch of different contributors, including me. Hit that subscribe button or follow any one of us on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the build show.